Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today is another interesting episode of Tutorial Tuesday and today we are looking at some questions. Now, these questions are coming from Keyshot and it's quite, you know, a while we talked about stuff you can do with Keyshot on the channel. So I'm going to address two questions today. The very first one has to do with how can you create a radial flow so that you don't have your reflection spilling everywhere. And the other one has to do with how do you customize or how do you create your own HDRI or maybe how you can, you know, light your own stuff directly in Keyshot. So what we're going to do today is going to be very simple. And just in case you don't know, we just finished talking about this amazing tool called the traffic. And this is the tool that, you know, we used in getting this car. I'm going to put a link in the description just in case you want to see the video about it. Maybe in case you want to get it. So with that said, we're going to dive directly into Keyshot. So what I've done is I've actually exported this all the way out and I've brought this right into Keyshot. So in Keyshot, what I did was just, you know, simply go ahead and reassign materials where I want materials to be. And how you can assign materials here is very simple. All you need to do is just simply, you know, find any material of choice. So let's say you pick something like this and drag it directly on top. And that way you have, you know, automatically reassign the material. So what we've done is we've gone ahead to reassign the materials that we want. And by default, you've noticed we have our startup HDRI. So I'm going to start with the very first question. The question is, how do you create a radio flow so that you don't have your reflection everywhere? So what I'm going to do now is just simply click on this object. Let's actually go over to the scene. You can see we have this basic plane. So I'm just going to double click on the basic plane and there you would notice we have the material. I'll click on the material graph and from this part is where we can start making changes. Of course, we've covered a video about, you know, getting started with material graph for Keyshot. So in case you haven't seen that video, link is going to be in the description. So first things we need to do here is just to simply right click and go over to, I think we need textures and we're going to use the color gradient and within the color gradient i'm just going to double click again and i need to find a very good color gradient so in other apps you get different color gradients like radial and stuff but in keyshot it isn't called radial it is actually called sphere or spherical so i'm going to connect this to the opacity of the material that is connected to the shader all right and then i would go ahead and connect this to the color and I'm just going to do that right here. Now, once I do that, you would notice we have a tiny tint. If I disconnect this, you would notice we don't have any tint there. But if I go ahead and connect it, you'll notice we have a tiny bit of tint right there. All right. So with this done, I'm just going to double click again. And within the sphere, let's actually dock this somewhere so we can see what's going on. I can increase the scale. All right. I can go ahead and increase the scale. And once I start increasing this, I think it's going to be too much. So maybe I should reduce this. All right, so reduction it is. So I will reduce the scale and the more I reduce the scale, you can now start noticing that we are having the material, you know, just within the parts where we want it to be. So with that done, you would also notice that we have two things controlling this stuff. So I'm just going to minimize this thing and keep it right here. Okay, so once you see this, let's zoom right in. Beautiful, you would notice that we have uh, the gradient that is controlling this right here is where we have the black one So if I simply do this we have it even way smaller and if I push this all the way up We have it even way more so with this you can control how much gradient that you want or how much radio gradient or how much radio Flow that you want now from this point We can also select this diffuse material and convert this to I just need to convert it to something reflective So maybe we can choose metal maybe all right so metal looks good so we can throw that in and now you can notice that we have this going on if you want it to be a bit rough you can increase the roughness of your metal you know punch it up punch it down depending on what you want and you can get this here so anything that is happening across this part does not affect your object all right now if you want these to also have a very cool fall off for example we can choose to reduce the skill a little bit more and then instead of having this quick fall off right here i can click over here and i can and just get a very tiny smooth fall off from here so you see the color was selecting is a little bit different from this 
and I can go ahead and click on OK. So we're having a very smooth fall off happening there. You can also use this to control the fall off. This is just totally dependent on what you want. Of course, this is just for, you know, the guys asking. But outside this, we're going to take a look at how you can now work on your HDRI. Now, the reason why, you know, I'm taking time to explain this is I know that there's a lot of people that are trying to get into rendering in KeyShot and maybe they're not just too technical, but then they just want to have an idea of how some of these things work. Now with this here, the next thing which we want to do is go over to where we have as camera. So I've already gone ahead to set two different cameras. So I set this first one and then we have this other one here. So I'll go ahead and delete this and show you how this camera was set up. So for this, I'm just going to turn this off and delete that. So for you to set up a camera, you need to be within here, click on this button and you have this camera here and you can set it to whatever thing you want. So right here, I can call this cam01. So that is the name of the camera. And from here, I can just simply lock it. Next thing, I will jump over to the free camera as this is the only camera I can rotate around while this is locked. All right. If this is locked, there is nothing you can do about it. But with this free one, you can simply go around and make changes and, you know, play with this however you want. At any point in time, you want to go back to this camera or go back to the view. Once you click, you'll be able to go back to that camera and also to that view. Another thing I can do is I can turn this off, zoom in or zoom out, depending on what I want. So if I'm zooming in right here or zooming out, I can do that. And once I'm done, you know, get the perfect position that you want things to be. Let's position this a little bit like that. All right. I can go in and simply lock this camera right there. So with the free camera, I can hover around and simply move around and get exactly what I want. So with this done, the next thing which we want to do is to simply create our own HDRI. So how you can play with this is there are certain rules when it comes to how you present your product or maybe how you light your stuff. This is actually perfectly fine if you want to go in and throw various, you know, HDRI, you know, use basic HDRIs that has been made available and get some pretty cool rendering. Of course, you can simply do that. Meanwhile, I just noticed that we don't have any material here. So I'm just going to type the word Chrome and simply find a very nice Chrome and replace that material right there. Cool. And with that done, I can also go over to where I have the environment and within this environment you notice this is what controls this all right so right now i can simply click here to get a new environment all right so now that i have this the next thing which i would like to do is to maybe make this a little bit dark so we can have some pretty cool stuff i would want to have this as dark as i might want it to be now this is also up to you and what your choices are i might want to have it as this dark and with this done you would also notice that since we're making this dark it is affecting everything that has reflection so the idea about creating your own hdri is to put reflections where you want reflections to be put highlights where you want highlights to be and these highlights are the things that will you know tell the audience what they are looking at so we would like to style this, you know, by ourselves. So what we can do is by simply adding a pin. So I'm just going to add one pin there and you can notice with this pin, I can move these things around. In most cases, people would like to, you know, interact with the tool themselves. And how you can do that is by pressing on this button right here and you can simply go in and position these things however you want. So there are certain things which I would like to bring to your attention. Right now, if I position this right here, which is what we have now, I can use the radius and increase how much I want this to be. I can also use this to reduce that. Choose to punch the brightness up and also punch the brightness down. I can also go ahead and choose to play with the fall off just in case I want to have some smooth fall off. And if I want to have sharp fall off, I can also do that right here. Now with this done, I can also choose to use different kinds of pins. So right now in KeyShot, we have about three different kinds of pins which you can use. The very first one is a solid. Then we have the gradient and finally we have the image pin so it totally depends on what you want and how you want to light your scene so what i'm going to do is just simply stick with the solid one and if i click right here i can get the second one now with the second one i would like to go with a rectangular object and within this rectangular object i would like to place that right here you would notice that we ended up moving this because we did not select this i will go back and since we did not lock our camera or did we so i'm just going to go back to the camera jump over to the free stuff come over to where i have you know, the environment and make sure I have this selected. Now with this selected, I can simply position this wherever I want and you can see we have this going on. Now I would like to make this a half looking stuff. So for that to happen, let's simply switch this to half 
you can now notice that we have some very sharp looking things going on right here. I can also proceed to increasing this as much as I want. Now, once I'm done increasing this stuff, I can simply click on the word done. And because we're within the free camera right now, I can go ahead and rotate or orbit this however I want. If I want to stay within the main camera, I can position that there. If I want to stay within the free camera, I can select this and rotate this across the entire scene. All right. So now that we have this going, uh, other things that you might want to do for a model like this, let me simply roll this back right about there. All right. So some other things that we we'll like to do is to make sure that we have the highlight about the points like this and also highlight these other parts so that we can actually tell, you know, what image you're looking at. So for that, I'll go all the way back to environment. I would simply go ahead and select this and position this where I would like it to be. So I would like it to be about half a point like this. Probably that makes more sense. So other things I would like is to light this part a little bit because I think it's a bit too dark. So for this, I'm just going to create a brand new camera, lock this camera, go over to where we have environment, click right here, create a new pin, use this and position that around the front. Right now, we would like to simply have some highlights around here just a bit just to tell more stories with this. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Yeah. So now we have those highlights around there. And with this now, I can simply increase the amount of brightness I want. Maybe that's a bit too much. I'm also going to push this. I think that might be a little bit too much. And maybe I can tone this down. Finally, I would want to play with the background color a little bit in between what we have here and what we have right there. All right. So with this done, I now have you know, my own default stuff. Uh, you can go ahead and save this if this is what you want to do. And if you want to add more light, you can simply proceed to add in more light. Now, this is, you know, how you can gradually play with this stuff. And for those who are wondering why is this lighting up and why is this shining? The reason behind this is we are using the area lights and this is actually a material. Now, if you want to see more about the area light, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can play with that. And if you want to add more stuff to your scene, you want to add more lights to this, of course, you can simply proceed to doing that. But I think you adding too much light is going to defeat the aim of having a dramatic looking shot. And for the most part, this is basically how you can create your own HDRI and also how you can use this light to highlight certain parts of your model. And so that is definitely going to be about it. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with your friend. Now, if you want this HDRI, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can get it. And on the other hand, if you're also thinking about getting started with Keyshot, you can go over to the links in the description that would get you up and running with Keyshot. Tell me what you think about this in the comment section. And if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.